Okay. Amateur hour is over. It is no longer 2021. And today we're going to sit down on Amplify Your Marketing Message with an incredible guest, Amy Loker. And we're going to talk about the fact that you need to set the stage and how important your visual presence is in attracting the right clients and setting expectations about who you are, who you want to serve, and how that experience will flow. Please give a very warm welcome to our guest, Amy. I'm excited to sit down and have a conversation with you. Well, Christine, thank you for inviting me into your space. I adore being here. And yeah, amateur hour, amateur hour is definitely over, people. <laughs> so let's talk about this, because why is it that we need to give far more thought to our visual presence? Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, you know what? These platforms of virtual interaction are definitely knocking away. More and more companies are either you know, having a bit more of a hybrid where they're able to have their teams anywhere, literally around the world. And you as an employee have that option or an entrepreneur to literally set up anywhere. And but we need to remember as though we are meeting that person across that lens as if we were meeting them in person prior to 2020, where we are showing up as if we were walking into their space and they were walking into ours. And bottom line, that comes down to it definitely shows that you have a level of commitment and your professionalism and that you're actually prepared for the work and the task at hand. You know, this is really fascinating because when we first started into the world of virtual, many people came to it for the first time. And it was okay to be working from your kitchen or it was okay to appropriate spaces. And in some cases that gave birth to the idea of a virtual screen. And I know when you and I cross paths, you said something that fundamentally changed however I have showed up since then, which was ditch the visual screen. The virtual screens are like the worst idea ever. So talk to us a little bit about that, because I think that a lot of people think it's fine. Everyone else is doing it. So I'm OK to do it, too. <laughs> oh, the words of the, those famous words of well, everybody's doing it. I should be able to do it, too. Well, um, we have this ability to be able to stand apart more than ever, really, when we pop up on screens. And yes, I um, hate to tell you all, but the virtual fake green screen background is highly detrimental to you, especially from a human psychology standpoint. Because the first thing people um, notice is that you have it a you look like a bad photoshop job for the most part <laughs> and um we are three-dimensional beings in a having to communicate across a two-dimensional platform at best but the thing that happens in the human um, psychology aspect of things we're as an audience member seeing the green screen and the fake background we're leaving you're leaving us wondering what you're hiding which leads to a major distrust because A, we're not even paying attention, truly not fully paying attention because we're really curious because every time you move and you should move when you're on these, like we need to bring that energy as if we were in person. So every time you move, you're losing an ear, you may be <laughs> losing a hand, you at times, and it has happened, where a, a, a potential um, you know, colleague, client of my husband's, literally was on one and completely disappeared into the yeah, background. <laughs> or like a poltergeist, which is also a really good first impression. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah, you know, and so it was just this whole, it's, it's distracting. And bottom line, you're leaving us with a distrust because we don't know what you're hiding. And going back to your point of, you know, the beginning, we were all kind of thrust into this and it was OK because we were all trying to figure those things out. But I also think that was really a pivotal moment in how we were um, accepting one another because we weren't accepting ourselves 
of not being used to being seen on camera. You know, we don't think about going into a live meeting and thinking about that, you know, we're not seeing ourselves the mm -hmm. entire time. And there's so many different ways that you can work through and um, help you get over that. But in the biggest thing is if you still show up as if you're walking into that, so that means you're grooming, you're getting fully dressed, all those things will elevate your confidence level and ultimately allow everybody to stay much more focused. Because what was happening at the beginning was we were not only conscious about seeing ourselves on screen, but we were literally opening up our safe zone. Talk mm -hmm. about vulnerability to the world. So everybody was seeing inside our homes, like our safe zone, like that's where we go to retreat. And even as an entrepreneur who's worked out of her home for many years, you know, not everybody had that, you know, space that was identified as a workspace. So, mm -hmm. you know, then you're, you know, now, you know, back then, and, and some people still are struggling with that. You know, we all wanted that, you know, open floor plan well that certainly came to <laughs> <laughs> it, it has proved challenging for all kinds of reasons visually one but also sound is another and i love yeah. you know i said since you and i had crossed paths which has now been at least a year if not longer mm -hmm. that you know you definitely have helped me rethink when i use a visual screen try never to do it as a first impression if i'm working with clients who've known me a long time and they know i'm remote they know i'm remote I'm honest about that. And that trust factor, I think, is a really important one for our audience to understand and recognize that the amateur hour is over. You need to be intentional about crafting your space and show up as if you were walking into an in-person event. And that is every bit of it. And so I want to talk about now you know, what are the signs that people are looking for and what can you do in your environment to establish yourself in the best light? Yeah, you know, honestly, one of the best things you can do is if you're having a struggle with the fact that you, the only space you can work in is a bedroom, for instance. It, maybe it's your bedroom, maybe it's your kid's bedroom, maybe it's your guest room. I, I get that. Like, trust me, we now have two of us working full time out of our home. I actually have converted our guest room closet into an office. So my husband actually sits inside the closet. The back of the wall is his backdrop. And sure, we have some, you know, fun wall skins and things like that that we've added to add that dimension. But those are things to think about, like where else, you know, we need to reimagine our spaces. But if you can't convert that closet, simply turn around, have your back against a plain wall. First and foremost, if, if you have no other option, just turn around. Even if your desk is facing that wall and when you turn on that screen and it's the bed in the background, it's an inappropriate setting for a professional meeting. I'm just going to call it out as I see it. You know what? If that's the only space, then just simply turn around for that, you know, half an hour, 45 minute hour interaction. There's fun ways you can actually make that happen easily. Invest in um, those doggy stairs. Mm -hmm. Place that on your bed and set your laptop on the top tier. You know what? It brings your camera at the proper eye level so people aren't looking up your nose or your ceiling and all those fun things. And we can talk <laughs> all about that. But the thing is, is it allows you to have eye contact. The thing we need to remember in these settings is we don't want those big distractions. We should be the, the center, the, the important factor. Anything else in the background should be simple and curated to a specific reason. As you and I talked, I always recommend somebody putting some type of floral or foliage in the back, real plants or artificial. They've come a long way. I have both. <laughs> there you go. And it's one of those things that you're able to add that depth and dimension. It immediately helps calm the audience, actually. The plants are amazing think about what they actually do inside our space so if they translate they can translate through the screen like that as well so even if you have a, a plain wall 
don't care if it's as stark white as can be or it has some color on it. Throw a plant on either side, slightly behind your shoulder and stuff like that. It allows the human eye to just naturally move, but you become the center. Scale is really important when we think about things like this. You know, I look at both of us here. We're both approximately sitting in the same, you know, area. Sometimes I sit up a little higher. It depends on where and what I'm doing and the environment in which I'm conducting work across the lens. The thing is, is you want to vertically fill up that space. There's nothing more distracting than, the, you know, being really low and it's and it's not giving you the confidence that you really have across that screen you're diminishing yourself in so many ways you know and it allows you to just really absorb that space and be as if you were sitting directly across from that person as i hear you speaking one of the things i want to just really highlight here is if you are appropriating a bedroom or a home space, stop thinking as the furniture needs to look good from the door you walk through, because that's not the experience your audience or your potential client or your co-creation peer in business is seeing. I want you to take what Amy is saying here and saying, put yourself in an environment where the best angle of the experience is the one that comes through the lens so that they see this amazing thing. And it doesn't matter if that means your desk is in the middle of the bedroom or you are sitting in a closet, because I want you thinking about what am I saying to my visual audience when I show up? And that is curating the environment so that the first best impression is the one that is happening virtually because virtual is not going anywhere. It is time to take this step and really commit to that. It's not about the kids or husband or, or, or friend who walks through the door and goes, why is the bedroom stage like that? I'm inviting you to say, I am setting the stage to give a great visual story to my potential clients. And I'm creating curiosity around the room that show my audience visually that I'm a professional. And secondly, that I have got skills and I respect you enough to show up put together and ready to rock and roll. Even when some days I am absolutely a hell in a handbasket happening three seconds before I jump on camera. So I want to, you know, we've talked a little bit about it, but just to recap, to really reinforce it, what are three things we could do right now to change the environment? Well, you know, it is really thinking differently about your space. And uh, first and foremost, take the ego out of it. Mm -hmm. Like take your ego out of it. You are showing up for your audience on the other side of that screen, bottom line. Um, so really, think about your space. I, my desk sits in literally the middle of my room. So it's a normal, you know, eight by 10, eight by 12 space. Just so you know, from my camera to my wall is about five feet. So it's not a huge space. You don't, don't overthink your space. Make sure it's, it's clear. It's simple. There's no over distractions in the back, you know, walk through it. And my last thing is definitely take a screenshot. Don't just take a screenshot and look at it on your um, desktop or your laptop or your screen. I want you to print it out because when you print out a picture and you take a look, you're seeing what your audience is seeing. So when there's something slightly out of place or distracting, you're like, oh, I don't know about that. You have the ability to change it. And Christine, you are so right. Just because it looks good in the space when you walk into the room doesn't mean that it looks good across the camera lens. And if you're really struggling with that, then honestly, you, you need to reach out to somebody and not your best friend because they're just going to tell you, you look fantastic. Look great. <laughs> you know, and, and they don't necessarily have the eye for it either. You know, another thing is, is, Again, find some of those pieces. If you have a plant, be careful on, again, the, the size and dimension of it. And when you have real plants, they're great because they change. You just want a large scale plant. And be careful of the different seasons. Make sure you're watering it and all those fun <laughs> things. A dead plant in the corner might not be a great impression. Yes, yeah. <laughs> 
No, that would be me. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm a fake one. <laughs> well, there you go. And and it is one of those things where it's okay as long as you're adding that depth and dimension into the space. And I, I guess one of my other things I really want to hit home for people is when you're working with somebody like a professional like myself, you can actually help you understand that if you're doing a presentation or you're, um, you know, you're speaking on stage, stand up, just stand up, allow yourself to have a couple different locations. So you and Christine, you do this and you do it great. And we've talked through it, but having those abilities, even just simply standing up for a meeting that you would have normally stood up in back in the day. Yeah. Do that today because it'll change your energy and it'll change the energy that's coming across through the other side of that lens. The other thing is, is when we used to stand on a stage and talk, we gained that energy from the audience. And that was so incredible. We don't necessarily have that today. Like we're really having to pull something a little different. Mm -hmm. Flip your mindset and understand that even when you're you're speaking on a virtual stage, what's translating through that camera is your energy and you are talking to each and every one of those members in that audience as if you were only talking to them. So you change your rapport a little bit, but a great way to get that energy is to stand up or switch I, up your space. I agree. And that actually also includes for the women in the room, it's choose shoes. And mm -hmm. this is a fun one because of course we haven't been out in shoes in quite a long time. It's one of the funnest things about going back into the real world right now is honestly the fashion and seeing people dressed because it, it really does change your attitude. And I think there's so many great insights here. I hope we've sparked your imagination about rethinking how you come across on a visual screen. Um, Amy has an incredible business called Mood Modular. And if you wanna find more information about her, we'll put the details to connect to her. She is amazing. She not only gives you the strategy around it, she actually will help you curate the back environment. So she is an industrial designer as well, which is I think something completely awesome and cool. And as we wrap up our episode here, I wanna ask you a question. It's our final segment and this is, you know, what is, your insight, what, if you were to say, you are seeing that you can amplify what's working now, what is it? You know what, it's really about curating your space to speak to the essence of who you are and your brand. And that means adding in those pieces that give your audience, the first time you pop up on screen, a little bit of what it feels like to work with you. Again, it's about energy and you can curate that simply with things you already have because if you have them in your space, meaning wherever your space is, it may not be in that room with you currently, but we can curate that. And if you really think through what the essence of your brand is and are able to take that across the camera lens, it's gold. It is gold. That's the mic drop moment. Guys, this is Amplify Your Marketing Message. Our guest today has been Amy Loker. It's been absolutely fantastic to have you. Be back here, guys. We will have another insight and episode for you next week. We'd love a five-star review. I am Christine Campbell Rappin, the owner of Clear Acceleration. This is about get clear, gain confidence, and see the results so you can accelerate, make more impact, and income. Thank you very much for being our guest, guys. We will see you on our next episode.